Thank you, Anura. Can you, uh, yeah, let's transition to the next slide. So good afternoon. Um, we will have to do some, uh, some pinging of our slide transition here as Anura and I are uh, talking from different locations. But as we're, uh, as we're transitioning um, into the second part of our uh, presentation, we, uh, Anura has spoke to, to technologies and risks associated with mobile medical applications and some of the different uh, uh, um, applications that these devices um, are actually performing in the healthcare ecosystem. So are there regulations for that? Um, if, uh, I want to go ahead and hit the continue button here, Anura. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the, the, um, Anura spoke to a number of the uh, regulations that have been evolving over the last uh, couple of years uh, within the United States. And uh, after uh, being a draft document for over two years, um, at the end of 2013, um, the FDA has published a guidance document for mobile medical applications. Um, a few caveats about guidance documents that FDA publishes. Um, these, these recommendations are in fact non-binding rec recommendations. So they do not reflect regulatory law in the United States, but what they do is they, they um, contain the FDA's current thinking and thinking about how uh, the products um, which are the subject of the guidance um, fall within the, the scope of regulations and they support information to manufacturers as well as to the FDA uh, auditors as to um, specific areas, specific guidance, specific um, procedures that can be used in order to assure that manu uh, we have an equitable uh, translation of the current federal regulations. There are alternative approaches that are possible, and um, the, the methods that are defined in the guidance documents, as they are non-binding, 